All right, I have some new details for you about what they're working on and supposedly have agreed to regarding avoiding another shutdown by figuring out what to do about immigration and con uh, this continuing resolution. Here's some of the numbers. $1.375 billion for physical barriers. All right, now, you're going to see the word bollard fencing. I've been using it with you for a long time because it's the only thing that exists. Forget wall. The president used wall because he didn't know what he was talking about, about what existed on the border. That's what they use. That's what they like. That's what they say they need. Okay? And in terms of the biggest barrier. Now, that number matters for two reasons. One, it's a lot more than one dollar. Right? So Nancy Pelosi saying not one dollar for the wall. The Democrats are going to have to now articulate what this change means, how they sell it to their base. Uh, the second reason it matters is this number doesn't come out of nowhere. In the last budget, the president or whoever figured out the budget uh, for the White House had a number for physical barriers that wasn't that much different than this. So that's what it's going to be seen as a gauge off of. And in fact, the irony, one of the ironies here is the Democrats had already offered him that amount of money. He walked away from that deal. Now, here's another one that we're going to have to discuss. The number of overall ICE beds is down. Now, you would think, well, wait a minute, isn't this about increasing capacity? This is going to be a political point of discussion uh, and controversy. The left is saying, the Democrats are saying, we want less beds because we want ICE to be able to hold fewer people. But at the same time, you have CBP and DHS saying, well, we need more capacity to hold people because that's our reality now as families with parents and children. All right. So these are the two things that we have. They're just some. There are going to be more details coming out. Things may even change. But I wanted to give you the latest information. Now let's debate it. We have the great debate with Anna Navarro and Mike Shields. Uh, Anna Navarro. Um, Nancy Pelosi said not $1 for the wall. They're now saying $1.375 for physical barriers. Uh, they're trying to reduce the number of beds that ICE has to hold people. Is this a good deal for the Democrats? Look, I, I think it has, uh, it has been an overall good deal for the Democrats because Nancy Pelosi did not wedge, uh, did not budge at all in the, you know, in the first shutdown. Uh, also because the shutdown was very costly politically for Trump and for Republicans and because she has uh, forced Trump to budge. But listen, I think honestly, more than asking ourselves whether it's a good deal for Republicans or a good deal for Democrats, whether it's a good deal for Trump or not, the question is, is it a good deal for the country? And I think that's how we have to frame it, because if we turn it into a game of political chicken, then nobody wants to give mm. an inch. And what we cannot have, again, is 800,000 federal workers having to have garage sales and make long, lengthy lines at soup kitchens. We cannot have that again, play with people's emotion and distress mm. that way. So, Mike, do you believe that the negotiators on the right are doing so in coordination with the White House so that when they say, yeah, we got a deal at 1.375, we got a deal at this number, that that's something that they know the president will accept? I think they do because I, I honestly don't know why they would stick their neck out and say they got something they can work on if they didn't have at least some kind of back channel to the White House to understand that the president is going to be able to claim that he succeeded in getting more money for a physical barrier on the mm -hmm. border, which is what his whole goal has been the whole time. And so you got to believe that, that, that they're communicating with the White House. Otherwise, they've made a huge mistake mm -hmm. if they haven't been. I also think it plays well for both sides, by the way. Um, Anna, because the Democrats, and look, you, tell me if I'm wrong. I mean, you, you're never bashful about that, that's, that's for sure. But I don't think the Democrats wanted to be in a position where someone could, where the president or any Republican could say, you guys are soft. You wouldn't give us any money for physical barriers, and it was just a political standoff for you. And you know that they're not of no value. You know that they're of some value, but you wouldn't give us any of them just as a point of pride. And I think that was a vulnerability for them that goes away if they put money into it. Yeah, you know, I, I've made and, this point. Well, hold on, not, Mike. Let me, let me not, get Anna's take. And, I'll come back oh, sorry, to you, Sorry, go ahead. No, no, ahead. it's okay. Go ahead, Anna. And, and, and it doesn't make substantive sense, right? Because both Republicans and Democrats mm. were in agreement of some sort of physical barrier and doing whatever they had to do in terms of border security, whether it meant more technical surveillance, whether it meant more bodies on the ground to have better border security. Both Republicans and Democrats were willing to fund efforts and fund technology to have better surveillance of drug entries and better drug interdiction into the country. So it really has been about the details. Now, the question I have, you know, when, when you ask Mike the question about the back channel to the White House and do they have the White House uh, stamp of approval, the real question is, will Trump stick 
to whatever he may have negotiated. What we have seen from Trump on this issue and other issues is that he agrees to something one day, then gets pushed back from right-wing agitators and takes it all back and changes his mind. So I hope that uh, if, if there has been back channels to the White House, they stick to it mm. because there are way too many people whose lives and economy are on the line. Well, Mike, I don't know how the numbers overall look, but in all of the presentations in the past, even with the superinflated number of five plus billion dollars, the physical barriers were still always the biggest price tag. Now, you could argue all day long whether or not that's the right way to prioritize. But if the president's able to say, look, the numbers are lower, but I got more money for physical barriers than we got for anything else on the border, it's better than you had before. Does that sell to the rightest regions? Yeah, look, I, th I think a couple things, and I made this point before. You know, I used to work for Newt Gingrich, and we had a shutdown in 95, which mm. was the previous sort of big shutdown that people talk about. And at the time, everyone would say we lost the battle. We lost the political battle with Bill Clinton at that time. But we reelected a Republican Congress. We carried seniors. That fight was over Medicare funding. And in the end, Bill Clinton had to sign a balanced budget the Republicans put forth. So we won the fight with the American people over the long haul. And so I think what the president discovered when, he reop when we reopened the government was that his base was still with him. He was able to prove to them that it was really the Democrats fighting him. He can go and get something to say, I'm continuing down this path. And at the same time, he's accomplished going into 2020 that he's really positioned Democrats as being weak on the border and him being strong on the border. So I think that he's realized that he's in a, in a better position than he may have thought he was before. Well, look, there's, there's positioning for both here because I still think it's a vulnerability to say that you're a wall away. Not that you're saying it, but that's the president's uh, unequivocal argument. And I think the more people learn about the facts down there, as we do on this show all the time, you'll see there are a lot of other things you could do that would change the flow, change the flow of drugs and people that a wall cannot but, do. But, Chris, can I just say this? By talking about a wall, we're now talking about all those things. So if you want to we secure a border... We could have talked about it without this. Well, but, but when you negotiate and when you push, you stretch it out as far as you can go to see what you can actually get. That's what a negotiator does. Right, but does. that was not we're his intention. All, his intention now, is all wall, Mike, and you know it. But that's, a, but that's what you do when you want to force the issue. So you now have Democrats going, no, wait a minute, we're also for border security. So he's moved the entire debate over where they have to say that, and we're positioning them as not strong on it because they, they are the weaker position. Well, look, so we see, we from see a their side. Perspective, we see their side playing here as well, uh, Anna, and that's about the beds. There's a big part of that Democratic Party that says we have to reduce the amount of enforcement. It's brutal. Uh, we're not dealing with these people the right way. And beds are a metaphor for them on that. Is that the right metric to pick? Look, uh, the overall number of illegal immigration has gone down. Right. So if you were following that logic, uh, you know, then it would make some sense to have less beds. Now, you bring up the point that it's now much more families than, mm -hmm. it, was, uh, than it was in the past. Yes. And so that's a, a different position. You've also had the problem, uh, Chris, of children dying in yes. DHS custody. And what that has meant and the, the message that has sent to the country and why it's become so symbolic, this idea of not funding these beds. Look, they got to come to some sort of, of middle. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, Donald Trump has a lot of wiggle room with his base. If there is one thing he has is maneuverability. Mm -hmm. When he was, he said if he went out there and he shot somebody on Fifth Avenue, they'd still stick with him. He was right. If he doesn't give him a big, beautiful cement wall, they will still stick with him. If Mexico doesn't pay for it, if the U.S. taxpayers pay for it, they will still stick with him. Right. So he has wiggle room that very few politicians have had. So for the love of God, make a deal and don't keep federal workers hostage. All right, I have some new details for you about what they're working on and supposedly have agreed to regarding avoiding another shutdown by figuring out what to do about immigration and con uh, this continuing resolution. Here's some of the numbers. 1.375 billion for physical barriers. All right, now, you're going to see the word bollard fencing. I've been using it with you for a long time because it's the only thing that exists. Forget wall. The president used wall because he didn't know what he was talking about, about what existed on the border. That's what they use, that's what they like, that's what they say they need, okay? And in terms of the biggest barrier. Now, that number matters for two reasons. One, it's a lot more than one dollar, right? So Nancy Pelosi saying not one dollar for the wall. The Democrats are going to have to now articulate what this change means, how they sell it to their base. Uh, the second reason it matters is this number doesn't come out of nowhere. In the last budget 
the president or whoever figured out the budget uh, for the White House had a number for physical barriers that wasn't that much different than this. So that's what it's going to be seen as a gauge off of. And in fact, the irony, one of the ironies here is the Democrats had already offered him that amount of money. He walked away from that deal. Now, here's another one that we're going to have to discuss. The number of overall ICE beds is down. Now, you would think, well, wait a minute, isn't this about increasing capacity? This is going to be a political point of discussion uh, and controversy. The left is saying, the Democrats are saying, we want less beds because we want ICE to be able to hold fewer people. But at the same time, you have CBP and DHS saying, well, we need more capacity to hold people because that's our reality now is families with parents and children. All right. So these are the two things that we have. They're just some. There are going to be more details coming out. Things may even change.